Okay, so as we all know, basically, we are doing more like a one week journey together, basically, to learn cryptocurrency. And we are doing it 30 minutes a day. Now, yesterday we talked about general introduction to crypto. Today, we are talking about crypto manipulation, understanding crypto manipulation and how you can best enjoy trading crypto with the Royal Q. So as much as possible, we're going to stick to our initial plan of 30 minutes. Yeah, we started this on Telegram, but something happened along the way, so we had to resolve to Zoom right now. So to begin with, um, just for the sake of those probably who didn't even join the introductory part on Telegram. So, okay. A minute, please. All right. So to begin with, there are some basic things you need to have, some basic websites you need to have as a crypto trader. Now, the first one is coinmarketcap.com. Okay, I think we did this at the introductory part, but for those who are new, CoinMarketCap is a website that gives you an idea of basically everything you want to know about any coin you're looking for. So you need to just come type coinmarketcap.com. So you click on it, the site coinmarketcap.com. So here, various details which you need are here. So first of all, we have um, the name of the coin, Bitcoin, for example, you can see Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the rest. Then the next thing is you have the 24 hour trade volume. So with the 24 hours price um, affect and this thing, the price increments or reduction. And this is a seven day graph. Within the last seven days, this is how far the price has gone up or come down. Okay. Then the next one now is the market capitalization. So usually the very simple way of what market capitalization simply means what is the value of Bitcoin? Generally, Bitcoin as an asset, what is this value of this asset? So Bitcoin generally as an asset is what $1.1 trillion. That's the value of Bitcoin now in the world. And the best way to do this calculation by yourself is simply coming over here. This is circulating supply. So you need to just times the circulating supply by the price. So if the circulating supply is 18,875, 18 million, 875,806 Bitcoin. That is a circulating supply. So all you need to do is times it by the price of Bitcoin, which is 60,623. So that would definitely give you the market capitalization of $1.14 trillion. Beautiful. Now, this circulating supply is also very important. The circulating supply is very, very, very important because now, remember, put this always at the back of your mind. Every day, every time you're trading crypto, Crypto is affected by the law of demand and supply, simple economics. The more anything, okay, let's use our everyday today stock. If there is more Gary, everywhere you go, you're seeing Gary, 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 then you can be rest assured that the price of Gary will drop because if seller A doesn't sell, seller B will sell to you, but they will be begging you, come and buy Gary. But the moment the supply is reduced, then the demand will definitely increase. And that's the same thing with cryptocurrency. Now, we have about 7 billion people in the world and the circulating supply of Bitcoin is 18 million. So 7 billion of us are looking for 18 million Bitcoin. I don't know if you're getting the point. And in the whole world, only 21 million Bitcoin can ever be mined. Like if you, even if you mine all the Bitcoin, you cannot have more than 21 million Bitcoin. So we all will be scrabbling for 21 million Bitcoin, 7 billion or 8 billion or more, whatever the world population is. So that is the reason you cannot understand why one Bitcoin is at, what's it called now? At um 60 million uh, sixty thousand dollars let us look like a coin look at the coin like um what's this coin now like doge this is the circulating supply of doge 132 billion doge so you can now see why doge is not going up to two cents how much is doge so let's even check doge is 0 0.2 okay it's just about two cents that's because we have how many billion one 132 billion doge so let's say for example the world population is seven million even if you share 10, 10 doge for everybody, there will still be extra doge left. Even if you share 20, 20 doge, 20 doge times 7 billion, 140 billion, there will still be extra doge. So the circulating supply also has to do with the price. They, one way or the other, they are linked also. And this also has to do with the market capitalization. So three of them are also linked. So these are the um, ideas you can get from CoinMarketCap. So the next thing on our list that every crypto trader should have is CoinGecko. 
as you have an idea of coingecoup.com. So when you go to coingecoup.com, so let's okay, let me cancel this um, and go to coingecoup.com. So coingecoup.com. All right. So coingecoup.com is almost the same thing with what's it called now with Coin Market Cap, but they, they give you the same information. But one reason why I usually prefer CoinGecko is they have this spot for recently added coins. So the moment coins are newly listed, you can just come here and check. So this is where you can discover coins even before people know them. So for example, this is SSRO. This is a coin that was listed about 13 minutes ago. Okay. This, um, this the second one is SAPE, 18 minutes ago. This one is Squid. Squid was listed one hour ago. So you can easily come here, click on any of these coins, read the projects about them, know what they are doing, you know, if it's something that makes sense to you, you can now start researching on them, buy them and hold. So even before these coins get listed on KuCoin, on Binance and the rest, you're already having them. Because usually when you go to, when coins are really newly listed, they can do 700%. Like yesterday now at the meeting, we saw um, Z. FC Potso and Token, it did about 900%, meaning those who bought it before now made times nine of their profit. Let me see if it's still in the top gainers for today. Uh, okay, beautiful. It's still in the top gain. Oh. Okay, so now it's doing about minus 35. That's because any day they're listing any coin, everybody wants to rush and buy it on Binance or on KuCoin or whatever. So that's why you can see, okay, that's falling down. The whole hype has died, but it don't rest. But as yesterday, this was at plus 900%. I mean, I don't, I don't mean 90 or 900%. So if you had $1,000 worth of FC Porto, as at yesterday, you have $9,000 worth exactly as 900% gain. So that has to do. But before people start buying it on, on Binance, we have people who had this coin even long before it came to Binance. So this is where you can get those kind of coins from and all that. Then the next two, I would not talk about them now which is Bitcoin treasuries, because they are, when we are talking about manipulation, we'll get to see them. So here I highlighted something. Things to note, the market is controlled by the law of demand and supply. Always put that at the back of your mind. The market is controlled by the law of demand and supply. But just to be sure I am still on this Zoom meeting, so that what happened to me on Telegram, I had finished the presentation only for me to know that I've been disconnected long ago. Just give me a reply, or if you guys are following, just reply in the chat. Let me know people are following me before I would make the same mistake here. So, are we together? I just need a yes. Okay. All right. I think, oh, okay. Thanks. So, I'm on track. So, there are some things you need to note. Who is always at the back of your mind? The market is controlled by law of demand and supply. Now, for those who are new to crypto, <clears throat> you know, when many of you just complain, ah, Alex, after crypto is falling, the crypto is falling. Many of you think there's one bank somewhere that the bank could just go and say, okay, today, as on today, Bitcoin is $60,000. Then tomorrow, the bank will come again and say, from today, Bitcoin is $50,000. So when Bitcoin falls, many of you will ask, ah, why is it falling? It is falling because there is more supply than demand. People are selling off. That's why it's falling. And it is increasing because what people are buying. So let's now understand what is the reason for this manipulation. Now, the number one reason for manipulation. So basically, when you hear manipulation, many of you think of manipulation as negative. The manipulation here I'm talking of is not a negative manipulation. Though. So when you hear crypto manipulation, somebody will say, yes, I talk calm, I talk calm. My person will say that they manipulate that thing. So you, think, you use the idea of Ujuru, they, they go, no, nothing like that. Manipulation, first of all, is a necessary part of the market. It is, it is necessary. Why is it necessary? So let's imagine this Binance, for example, let me go to the homepage. So let's imagine that this coin is just going upward, like it's just going upward. So remember in crypto, you are buying low to sell high. But if the price is just going high, 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 high it is, it is, it's not going first of all, it's not realistic. But even if it's going high, meaning you just, all you need to do is enter, enter, then there's no need for selling. You keep on holding, you just continue going. That is not really realistic. But Bitcoin or crypto has to go from low to high. You sell here, it falls low again, you buy back, it increases, you sell here. So, that is why you see that the graph must always go up, 
down and up. So when you check this, for example, let me Y expand it. Are you seeing the falling price, the up, down, up movement? So those who make money in crypto are those who, first of all, understand how to use this. And this is what you shall be learning. Now, the second reason why the market is manipulated is to clear leverages, to clear up leverages. So what is a leverage in the first place? Now, a leverage, let me come here and show you what a leverage is. A leverage is basically, is basically, so let's say, imagine you're having some of your dollars to trade and you're wishing, oh God, if I get money on a $10,000 for you to trade this coin, you know, Binance can give you loan. That's why we said crypto is come to change the idea of banking. So first, first of all, for you to go and collect loan of $10,000, it therefore means you carry the receipt of all your village people and everybody. So $10,000 is about 5 million now, be 5.4 million thereabouts. So you need to carry collateral that is worth that. So first of all, go and give them your house certificate and so that if you don't pay back, they will seize your property, right? But on Binance, even without knowing the owner of Binance, you can collect a loan on futures. And that's what we call leverage. So let's imagine I have $200 to trade. And I want to trade times 50 of my $200. All I need to do is collect a loan now of 50X so it to make it $10,000. But if there is a challenge, and what is that challenge? When you are trading on futures, you must have a direction. So you're either saying the market is going higher than when I'm entering. So let's imagine the, the price of this coin now is $10. So you're either saying the market, the, as I'm entering now, the market must go higher than $10 or it must go lower than $10. If it goes higher, you are opening a long position, a long L-O-N-G. If it goes lower, you are opening a short position. So you choose what to enter. So if, for example, you say you want to enter a long position, meaning the price of this coin must go higher than $10. If it doesn't, bro, your 200 naira, or this $200 will be liquidated. That's what we call liquidation. You lose it. And how does this work? Since you are saying the price is going higher than $10, Binance will say, okay, you want 50 XRB, so your $200 is what $10,000, they'll say yes. Binance will say, okay. However, if the price falls below, for example, 9.5, so yeah, the price, present price is $10. They're not saying, if the price falls below what, 9.5 or more, you have lost your $200. So do you agree? You say yes. Good and fine. They give you the loan, you start trading. The price enters 11. $11, you are making money because your profit now will be not with your $200 here, but with your $10,000. Your profit is what your profit will be calculated with quite all right. But it gets to a point. So many people enter the market. Yes, the market is bullish. The market is bullish. We are making money. People enter the market and they throw caution to the wind because the higher your leverage, the closer your liquidation price. So it's not the same liquidation price they will give somebody who is using 2x, that's two times leverage, with somebody who is using 50x. Definitely, they cannot be the same. So there is a point. This is where this third website becomes very important. This is, uh, what's the name of this website now? Um, greed and Fear Index. This alternative.me. This is Greed and Fear Index. Now, let's go there. Let me open it. Then I will explain why that website is important. So you can just go to your browser and, and search for it. Greed, just type greed and fear in this. Just type for it. Different pages will open, but we'll go to this one, alternative.me, alternative.me, click on it. So this is the site, greed and fear index. Now it's gonna tell you, now this index, basically how does it work? It tells you the psychological nature of the market. Because one thing you need to know is, it is human beings that are trading in this market. It is psychology that affects our buying and selling. Psychology easily affects us. And another thing you need to know is history always repeats itself. The same human beings that were here 10 years ago, I see the same human beings we have now. So the same psychology works. So, but here they are able to calculate the psychology of the market using some, some characteristics. And here, this, look at some of the yardstick they use in, in doing this greed and fear index. So number one is volatility. You can come here and read it to understand it better. It's something you can explore. Second is the market momentum. That is the volume of price. So the volume is also what they, they calculate the volume of buying and selling, the interaction in the market to know what the market is thinking. Then the next one is social media. They go on social media, they see what people are posting. Definitely people, the post you see on social media will affect you. So let's say you see somebody who just made 10 million from Bitcoin. 
boom, you want to buy Bitcoin. Wakanda, uh -huh. people, people made money from Wakanda, boom, you want to really buy Wakanda. So social media affects. Then they do survey, surveys like interaction, asking questions and the rest. Then this dominance, then this trend. Now come here and read more of it. It is all this they put together to get this greed and fear index. So as you can see right now, the greed and fear index is 52, meaning it is in between. Okay, it is in between. That is, the market is neither greedy nor fearful. People are just static. They're trying to watch and see where is this market headed? Are we heading for a bullish market or are we heading for a bearish market? So in such so it therefore means that the market is indecisive for now. So, however, there are some times. Remember, Bitcoin broke a new all-time high at sixty-six thousand. It broke another new all-time high at what sixty-nine thousand, and all of a sudden, everybody became bullish on Bitcoin. So, what happened? The greed increased to this point, right? The greed increased to almost seventy something percent. Everybody became greedy. So, what happens is at this point that people are greedy, they throw caution into the wind. So they now pick up. Remember, once you are greedy. These are the people who want to just turn $10,000 to $100,000 in two days. So since they're having $10,000, they collect 50x leverage. They're borrowing money from Binance, all right? Because the market is going up, up, up. Now, Binance, they're like, oh, <laughs> you cannot eat them 247 now. But they also need to make money. Everybody's fighting for his own money, right? So the market is going up. Everybody's entering long position, long position, long position. People are collecting loan from Binance, using their leverage, using their leverage, using their leverage. And people are cashing out, cashing out, cashing out. You guys think Binance will be looking at you? You think they don't like profit too? You are borrowing their money, you are making, they are not liquidating you, you are happy. Well done. This is where manipulation also comes in. This, don't forget, these guys are big guys. They have what it takes. They have what it takes to influence the market, whether you like it or not. They have what it takes to influence the market. So this is the idea of manipulation. So what now happens is this. We, once you are trading on futures, for example, many people are trading on futures. In fact, most traders are trading on futures. That's why they always tell you Bitcoin is risky. For those who trade futures, it is risky for them. We on Real Q are using spots, we are not using futures. So get that out of your mind. You cannot be liquidated on Real Q. You can never be liquidated. So, but the thing that happens basically now is this. Since everybody is now going, everybody is so bullish now, everybody is trading, trading, trading. They are like, okay, now don't make money rich. Let us now take back our money. So let us look at this picture here. All right. As you can see, 1 billion worth of loans. All those who said Bitcoin was going to go higher. This, this, this is within the last two hours. Old. I just, this news, I just screenshotted it. If you can check it online if you yourself to verify. I just screenshotted this news. So $1 billion worth of loans. All those who said Bitcoin was going to go higher. They were liquidated. Why? Because Bitcoin went below sixty thousand dollars, and I'm sure many of them probably they entered when the market was around sixty-three or sixty-five thousand dollars, and their liquidation price was around sixty thousand dollars. For example, maybe they didn't set a stop loss, and all of a sudden now Bitcoin went below sixty thousand dollars. So they lost their money. Binance have made their profit back. FTX, KuCoin, all of them that trade features, they made their money back. So it's like what I said: the devil giving you a car, but when he wants to collect it. Eh? you see something. So this is another reason why this market can be manipulated. That is to do what? To clear off leverages. Are we understanding to this point? First of all, let me get your response from the chat. Is this making sense to you? Are you getting the point? Okay. <clears throat> now, another reason again is, is what we call um, another reason why the market is being manipulated is to accumulate more by whales. So let me give show you this picture here. This is what a whale looks like, right? If the biggest mammal thereabouts. Now, who are whales? Whales, for example, look at this is over $150,000. 150,000 Bitcoin, for example, accumulated by Bitcoin waves in 60 days. This is not $150,000, so like a worth of Bitcoin. A Bitcoin, like one, two, three pieces, 150,000 pieces of Bitcoin accumulated by people in 60 days. One Bitcoin is about $60,000 times 150. This will tell you the billions or the millions of dollars these guys are accumulating. So who are whales? 
these are people who have money. They are not buying Bitcoin in zero point something Bitcoin. They are buying, they are buying Bitcoin in thousands. So for you to have an idea of whales, this is where this last website is very important. Bitcoin treasuries.org. So when people are telling you Bitcoin is a scam, Bitcoin is a scam, this, this, that, come here and see people who are having Bitcoin, then you shut up and go for a way to enter crypto market. So just come here and type Bitcoin treasuries, Bitcoin treasuries.org, Bitcoin treasuries.org, that's O-R-O-G. So log into the website. Now you would see people who are holding Bitcoin. Let me just scroll down a little bit. So this is the first one, public companies that are holding Bitcoin. So this is MicroStrategy. MicroStrategy is holding 114,000 pieces of Bitcoin. 114,000 pieces of, of pieces of Bitcoin. They are valued, this is valued at about $6, six billion. Then our famous guy, Elon Musk, he is having 42,902 pieces of Bitcoin, which is what $2.5 billion. Okay. Now there are countries, there are various people who are holding crypto coin. Let's come here and see for ourselves. So you know the whole crypto world is bigger than what you think. Mm, let me look for countries holding Bitcoin. So okay, these are countries holding Bitcoin. So you can see Bulgaria. Bulgaria as a country is having. 213,519 Bitcoin. That is just where they have their gold reserve. They're having Bitcoin reserve. Nigeria is here fighting crypto traders. Well done. Ukraine government, 46,000 Bitcoin. This is Finland. This is El Salvador. This is uh, Georgia. This you can see. Then you cannot talk of private companies. So it's not. So you can see um, this one is having one. In fact, so many just come here and check it out yourself. You'll be marveled. This is a company having 174,000 Bitcoin. When you go down, you see personal individuals who are having Bitcoin. You can check all of them here. So this is what this price is for. Now, remember we said one of the reasons why they manipulate the market is to accumulate more by whales. So how is accumulation done? So imagine you are a whale, you want to buy Bitcoin. And the price of Bitcoin is $69,000, for example. So before you make times two of your profit, of your capital, Definitely, everybody's entry business to make money now. So before you make times two, it therefore means that Bitcoin must reach $138,000, right? Before you make that kind of money. However, a smart investor will say, is, what if I buy Bitcoin cheaper than $69,000? What if I influence the market in such a way that Bitcoin drops and I buy it, you know, lesser? I buy it like, say, $50,000. And once it reaches $100,000, $100, I've made times two. Once it reaches one fifty, dollars I have made times three. Do you get the idea? So most times the price is manipulated for people, for wheels to enter the market. And that is why I look at every Bitcoin graph. This, this is what happens. So the price is somewhere here. A wheel wants to enter the market. So they look for every means to make sure the market comes down. You get the point? They buy here. And since there are ways and they are buying more, you now discover that the next time it is rising, it is rising higher than where it reached. That's why you discover that after every major dip, Check the history of Bitcoin. After every major dip, there's a new all-time high. After every major dip, there's a new all-time high. That's just the principle. The, manip the way it's manipulated the market, they enter down, you know, and they go up. So those who trade on futures are the losers, basically, because at every major dip, there's high liquidation for people on futures. But those of us who trade on spots, thumbs up. That is why I can't see, but I am still waiting for the React you uh, trader that come and tell me that I was liquidated. The only thing that can happen to you, uh, sorry, happen to you is probably once the price comes down, your robot will not sell and it will be waiting till when the price goes higher than when you enter the market, depending on the settings you're using for it to sell. Welcome to the world of cryptocurrency. And the last part, one reason why the market is manipulated is to make profit or to take profit. So imagine you, you bought, when Bitcoin was like $10, you bought like 500 Bitcoin. Now Bitcoin is at six. $30,000. So your money has increased, but your money cannot just be in Bitcoin. Let's say you want to do a project, you want to build a house or something. So you necessarily need to convert your money back to Naira. So out of, the five, out of the 500 Bitcoin you bought, you decide to sell 250 Bitcoin. Now 250 Bitcoin is entering the market as supply because you are selling now. So it's going to be a supply into the market. Now that can cause a minor correction because somebody who is holding 250 Bitcoin just sold to take profit. I don't know if you're getting it. So this is also another thing that leads to the fall in price of coins. 
that whichever way you look at it. Now, the next thing is, how is this manipulation done? So with the ending, like I said, I want to stick to the 30 minutes I promised earlier. I'll try to be faithful to it. So how is this manipulation done? And there's all for fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt, F-U-D. This is all fraud. So fraud basically is a way of spreading fear. Because once people are fearful, what happens? They would naturally want to sell off their assets. So at this particular point in time, let me go back to the, this place. Now, if you look at this, this point, we discover that we are facing something like that. There is authenticity. That's why this graph is in between. People don't know the next point to go. A good news, once any good news about in the crypto world, now let's say one country just comes out and say they have adopted something or any good news, it will, will start going towards the grid area again. People will start accumulating. But if there's any negative news at this point in time, we'll start going back to the fear area. People will start selling off. That is fear or sensitivity and that. And how does this happen? One of the easiest ways is social media. So let's imagine somebody like Elon Musk. We all know the popular Elon Musk. If he comes out today now to say, hey, in fact, I feel bad about Bitcoin. I don't think I'm going to do Bitcoin again. Don't forget, he has like 2,000 Bitcoin. But he just says that everybody's going to be like a whole Elon Musk that is a lot of crypto saying he's not doing Bitcoin again. You see people start selling. Usually those newbies who don't have any idea, they start selling or start selling, selling, selling. Once all of you sell, the price comes to, let's say, $40,000. And the guy laughs, like, this idiot. He goes back, he buys more to add to his 42000 already. And after buying more, what happens? He comes back to say, eh, I think I made a mistake in my last post. I mean, I feel really good about Bitcoin. That's like, after some days now, all of you are like, wow, I just lost. I sold at a loss. You now go back and start buying again. This is how crypto is being manipulated. So if you do not know all these things, you see yourself making mistakes when you're not supposed to make mistakes. So for example, now that the price is falling, it's actually a good time to buy if you have the money to buy. But you see, you should be surprised that it is not people are selling at a loss. And that's why usually I will tell people, if you want to do crypto, I would not really advise you to borrow money to start crypto. You know, so many, so many people, so many people have, they have bad experience of crypto because of how they started. So let's say Bitcoin was rising, it reached 66,000. Somebody just come and tell you, well, Bitcoin, they move, Bitcoin, they move, buy Bitcoin. You don't have the money or you want to borrow. And you're supposed to pay back, you're supposed to pay back yesterday. And it is just the day now, the day before yesterday, that Bitcoin from 69 fell to 58. Your value has dropped, okay? The person comes back with my money. You see yourself selling at a loss by force. And you're not going to borrow more money to complete the money and pay back. Those are the kind of people that come and tell you, crypto is coming. The last time I took crypto, my money lost. My money no loss. You know, see person teach you crypto well, <laughs> okay? So that's also something you need to know. So this fear, fear of sanctity and doubt can also be caused by government policies. So I think it was yesterday, the first day, China again, the popular China came out with their usual life again, saying eh, Bitcoin mining and the rest, it consumes a lot of electricity. In the nearest future, we are thinking that miners will start paying tax, whatever, whatever, just some news just to discourage. Before you know, that brought a negative sentiment in the market. People started selling, oh, is this, could this be the fall of Bitcoin and the rest? You, know, you understand this whole kind of stuff. So that's what for fear or sanctity and doubt. This can come in various ways, social media, government policies. For example, was it December last year? Yeah, I think December or so, when the United States Security Exchange Commission had an issue with XRP. We also what happened to XRP from about over 300 or 400 dollars, 400 naira that I was using naira to calculate. It came down to as low as 80 naira for one. Now it has gone back to over 500 naira again. That is the idea of it. So once there's any government stuff that can affect the emotion of people that, that can cause fear or sensitivity and doubt, it affects the price. What are the lessons to learn from this? Number one lesson is, first of all, even in a bullish market, as against what many of us think, many of us think the bullish market is straight up, you know, just upward ever. In a bullish market, you must see correction because what? There are people to be liquidated. People must always be liquidated in the bullish market. So, there must be a correction, either artificial correction, but one way there must be a correction. So any market that goes up must come down. So put that at the back of your mind. Another thing you need to know is this, fundamental and technical analysis cannot give you 100% accuracy. Look at, let's look at these guys. See these guys, um, okay. This 1 million or 1 billion worth of assets for the longs that got liquidated, 
the only time that all of them are new and novices, people who started trading, who don't have an idea of taking an analysis and fundamental analysis, of course they are not. These are people who are professional traders. That's why they can trade on futures, first of all. They are done their own analysis. And for them, Bitcoin was going up. So they decided to enter a long position. How come they are being liquidated? That's the idea. This will tell you that even the best professional trader, when it comes to futures trading, you can get liquidated at some point in time. Because there's some analysis you do, they are for the long term. Yes, Bitcoin may reach 80,000, good and fine. I strongly believe that. I'm of that opinion. I'm mad on that too. But in between or before that happens, do you know if there's going to be a correction at some point in time? Depending on your level of expertise on technical and fundamental analysis, you might be able to get a wind or an idea of it. But this last one that happened that brought Bitcoin to below 58,000, a whole lot of people did not expect this. They did not see this coming at all. Yes, there are news saying, we might test a, you know, my retest $55,000, my retest $55,000. Nobody knew when. And this came upon so many people as a surprise. This will tell you that even um, fundamental and technical analysis might not be 100% sure. This is why traders have come out to say, okay, what is the best way for us to avoid all this nonsense? What's the best way for us to avoid all this nonsense? And that is where quantitative trading comes out. Quantity, you know, the idea of quantitation, calculation. In quantitative trading, basically, you do not really need to start looking at graphs to start studying. All you need is proper management of your assets. Now, what do I mean by this? Let me come to Binance, for example. So let's say I'm in Binance right now. Okay, so this is my Binance account. Now let's imagine, for example, I want to buy a coin. So let's say this, this is a Monday morning and the price is here around $64,000 and I want to enter the market. Would it be wise for me to just enter the market all at once? I think that would be very foolish. I need to at least buy in bits. What do I mean by buying in bits? If I have like $200, for example, I can buy $20 here. If the market eventually goes up, good and fine, a part of my capital is already making profit for me. But as you're experiencing now, if the market comes down, why others are angry? I am happy because what I can buy another level here. Are you getting this idea? If the market comes down again, as we've seen here, while others are angry, what happens? I can buy another one here. That is quantitative trading. I am not using core technical analysis to start looking at graph. I'm just using simple common sense and IQ to trade for basically quantitation and calculation. Now, to understand this better, let's come backwards to a very more complex graph. Okay. So this is a very nice graph. Let's look at this. So imagine I enter the market here, 65K, because I am hoping that Bitcoin will reach $80,000. But I did not use 100% to buy, I used only 20%. So let's say I use only $20 to buy, okay? Now, and the price is here, for example. As Bitcoin fell here, it is very possible for me to buy another one. True or false? True. Bitcoin fell to this point. I can buy my third position here. Do you understand? Now, the price has risen up to this level, okay? It is possible for me to sell this my last two positions. I'm, make, I'm making profit on them already, right? Now, the price has fallen again. I can buy a new position here. The price has risen again. I can sell that position here. The price has fallen again. I can buy this position here. And the price has risen. I can sell this position here. Now, look at, I've made a trade. One trade here, two trade here, three trades here four trades, I've made my trades four times. But check it, this was the first time I entered the market. Though. The price has not gone above this first time. Let's draw a line to see it. It has not gone above the first time, right? But in between here, because I'm using quantitative trading, what happens? I have sold like four times and I've made profit. Now, if you want to do this manually on your own, it is going to be complex, very, very, very complex. Why would it be complex? Because First of all, you cannot really determine, like, just imagine you're sitting yourself all day, buying at every low, selling, buying, selling. It's going to be very, very, very complex. So one of the challenges, first of all, this quantitative trading we are hearing of today, it did not just start. It came out in 1970. It became very popular in the 1990s. But one of the reasons why people have not been hearing of it is, is because of this complex nature. You buying, selling, monitoring the graph is going to make your life complex. Recently, people have not like been, okay, why don't we just create a robot with the rise of artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence, 
why don't you just create a robot that does everything for us, like make our life very simple, very, 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 very simple. So all we need to do is program the robots. First of all, these are the things you do. So like this is the robot, Royal Q. You get the robot, you connect it to your Binance account. You program all your settings are here in the robot, you program your robot. And as soon as any setting you, you put on the robot, it takes effect in Binance because you already connected the robots to Binance. Okay, so you can do all your settings in the bot. So without having to make constant or continuous records to you coming here on Binance. So what the bot does is it buys for you, it sells for you, you set in all the logic. So for those who have been hearing of Rare Q and you think, and Rare Q is one Ponzi scheme because I used the Ponzi. So you think, when you put think, I will deposit my money with Rare Q, they will trade for me, they will be given percentage. Cancel your mind, that's not where Rare Q is. You are the one in charge of your assets. That is why you need to understand what crypto is. And that's why we are taking this pain to teach you. Nobody is really interested in whatever you think will be the referral bonus. And that's what many people think. They're like, okay, we are all interested in a gain or a win-win situation in the sense that you get the knowledge, you get the value. And as against what we've seen in Ponzi, what you do is you learn how to trade for yourself. You make your money for yourself. Because everything, your, every money you are using will be in your Binance. The only money that is going out of you is what you are paying for your yearly subscription with, for the robot, which is $120. $120. So basically, this helps your whatever lifestyle you are living, whether you're a professional trader, you're a businessman who doesn't really want to focus more on trading, wants to focus more on building his business, you are somebody who works a nine to five job, whatever it is, this fits your budget, this fits your need. So this is the analogy. So imagine you're having like, 500,000 naira in your bank. Your bank manager comes to me and like, hey, bro, you and I know we can give you sufficient or sustainable interest. But there is this software. All you need to do is you're going to buy it and you're going to connect it to your bank and give or take in a very bad market, let's say in a bearish market, you are able to make 10 to 20% of your capital. In a very good and a very strong bullish market, you're able to make 50 to 100. Because to make 100% of your capital is possible. Very, very possible. I've been able to do that in two weeks. I think if for those who are on my YouTube channel, you've seen the video I've done in this same crypto. So it's very possible for you to do crazy shit. Well, we are saying even in a worst market condition, okay, you can still make 10 to 20 and in a good market condition, you can make 50 thereabouts. Would you buy that software? Yes or you know? And coupled with what you've learned now, you now know how the software works. It's not, it's not doing any magic. So as against a normal trader who would come, let's say for example, who will come buy here and wait till whenever the price goes above here before yourself. You can buy at any point without having to worry about score, fundamental technical analysis. All you need to do is use Propal Asset Management. That is why we also teach you how to use the bot. You buy at various intervals so that at any slight rise, you can sell. Once it drops again, you buy back, you know, do crazy stocks. Now, would you take this opportunity or would you turn it down? Let me see from my chat. If this opportunity is presented to you, for example, say from the chat, would you take this opportunity or would you turn it down? So let me get your response. I'm waiting. So would you turn your bank manager down or would you take it? So before Mr. Oscar, he's going to grab it. All right, let's see. Who else is going to turn it down or who's going to grab it? All right. Beautiful. This is it. So, like I said, I've already, this is already 40 minutes. All right. So, I just broke my protocol of the normal 20 minutes, but whichever way, or normal 30 minutes, whichever way, this is day two of our presentation, which is crypto manipulation and how to utilize this crypto manipulation. If there is no manipulation like this, you will not make money. So, React you helps you utilize every bit of this manipulation to make your cash. So, Tomorrow will be strictly for Real Q. I'm talking strictly about Real Q, what the bot is, things you need to know about the bot, how to set your bot, and do many other stuff with this bot. Okay, that's our lecture for tomorrow. As usual, 30 to 40 minutes. We don't want to be wasting two hours for one straight presentation because we know the retentive span for most people might just be 30 minutes or one hour. After that, whatever you are saying is rubbish to them. So we stick to this for now. And later in the day, I'll look for time. Since we are all in the same group, I'll look for time to create for question and answer. I don't want this to be one long 
presentation, but just let's make it bit by bit for all those who are still new to crypto. So, but if you have any present, any question at all, you can ask on the Telegram channel, the, our official Telegram channel. I'm sure you all joined this meeting on the Telegram channel. So drop your questions. Any other, anybody can reply you. If I'm free, I would also reply you. All right. I think that will be all for this afternoon's presentation. We'll get to discuss more with ourselves on Telegram and on WhatsApp. All right. So the meeting will be ending right about now in five, four, three, two, one.